Hello everyone, this is Joshua Haji from Pixelate and I'm here to talk to you about expansion items. Now, before we begin, please do hit that subscribe button down below to get notified of our latest updates as well as when new tutorial videos gets uploaded. Also, if you see that this video has been useful for you at any point in time, you may leave a like down below. So, without further ado, let's begin! So, in our previous video, what we left was the lists, right? So we have a list item here. So we have our first item label here. And then we have a second item below it. So in our previous video, we discussed that lists are a useful way for listing items as well as other features such as, or in the case of other applications, what they use is they use the lists to make contacts, right? So in our previous video as well, we tackled the contacts list information, right? So also in the previous video, what was tackled was the email, right? So we created an email using the list feature of the component, right? So in this video, what we're going to talk about is the expansion item. Now you might be asking, what is an expansion item? So an expansion item based on Quasar's definition, as you can see here, allows the hiding of one's content that is not immediately relevant to the user. So what this means is that we can hide elements that are not necessarily needed yet for now and then we can display them later if the user chooses to do so. So in our case, if they click the arrow button, later on we'll show you how. So also based on Quasar's definition as well, expansion items are also known as collapsibles. So in essence, they're basically queue item components wrapped in an additional functionality so that they can be included in queue lists and inherit queue item component properties. So that's one way of putting an expansion item. So for the most basic implementation, what we can do is, if you look at the source code here, you can see that they have a queue list, right? So, and then within the queue list, you have a queue expansion item. So this component tells Quasar that inside the list, there is an expansion item. And then we add a cue card and then a cue card section. So aside from those, you have multiple expansion items as well. So with that, what we can do is we can try implementing it. So in order to implement so, or rather to implement it as such, what we need to do is we need to create a queue list first. So in our div here, let's create another div and let's see, let's go back to our app. And then let's try adding a text here just to visualize where our con container is going to be. So it's right beside. Okay, so from here on out, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a queue list, right? So now we have a queue list. Aside from having a queue list, what we need also is an expansion item, right? So to make things much more prettier, we can add a bordered component or bordered property to it. And the next, what we can do is we can add the queue expansion item itself. So we can add the queue expansion item. That alone gives you already a queue expansion item component, but it has no content yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to add additional properties to it in order to include specific functionalities. For example, we can have a queue card. Let's have a queue card here for now. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to add a queue card section. And then within the queue card section, we can just grab some random text, so like so. So now we have a dummy text, right? And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to add these properties. So if we add the expand separator, what it does is basically it creates a separator when you expand the item, hence the expand separator. Also, we can specify certain icons and labels and captions to it as well. So in this example, they added the caption John Doe, and then they added the label account settings, and then lastly, they added an icon. So in our case, what we can do is we can customize it the way we want to. So in our case, what we can do is we can add an icon, let's say home. And then let's add the label named home. And then we can have a certain caption, sample caption. So those things in mind, what we're going to have is simple content right here, as you can see, right? But the difference is that it takes up the entire screen in essence. So what we can do is we can set a specific width here, right? So in this case, they created the div with a specific max width. Okay, so we can do that as well. So what we can do is we have a div and then let's add a style. And then let's say max width, oh, max width, let's set to 
300 pixels, let's say. So that should shrink the content wide enough, eh, like so. And then, aside from that, we can also have additional Q expansion items. So going on our own here, what we can do is we can add another expansion item, like so. Let's say we add another Q card. Or rather, instead of a Q card, let's make things a bit more uh, dramatic. Let's add, let's say, a Q icon. Let's say account or mail. Let's try mail, like so. So if we do that, what we have is a mail here, right? And then let's set the size to, let's say, 50 pixels. That should be big enough, like so. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to add an expand separator as well. And then let's add a simple icon. Let's say mail. And then let's label it as mail. And then let's add some caption. Maybe not. Maybe let's leave it at that. So now you have two expansion items, right? You have the home and then you have the mail below. So that is the most basic form of a expansion item. So aside from that, you can control the expansion state by using the expanded model. So as you, as you can see here, we have a V model. So by doing that, we can also apply or we can apply specific V model states to certain expansion items. So in this case, let's try adding a V model here. Let's say expand item. Okay. Now let's grab this one and then let's put it, let's set it to false. Like so. So if we open this, it works as intended, right? Yes, so it seems that nothing's happened for now. But if we set this expand item to true in a different manner aside from the button itself here, let's say, let's create a button somewhere. Let's say Q button, label, uh, let's say click me. And then let's add a click event. And then let's set that expand item to the opposite of it. Like so. so instead of Q button, let's make it Q toggle. Oh, no, no, let's use Q button instead. So if you click that, as you can see, it expands on its own, right? Based on the V model. So. That is one, one another useful feature of the expansion item because you can expand specific items based on certain V model events or based on states of V model. So aside from that, you also have the style. So you can style the items itself as well. So if you can see, we have the dense property here, right? So we can try doing that. Let's go and Let's just be a little bit experiment experimentative here. So let's add a dense here. So as you can see, it's now dense. And then we can add a, let's say, color. Oh, I don't, I'm not sure if there's a color. So I think there is because this one's colored purple. So, okay. Okay. So now what they've said is a header class. Let's say text red what what should it look oh, okay so it works so here we can add a header class let's say text blue like so so now you have a blue text here and then we have a red text here so in that case you can see that the expansion item itself is modifiable or you can style it the way you want it to Aside from that, you can also create content inside the expansion item itself. In our case, what we did was we created a Q icon inside the expansion item. And then for the other one, we created a Q card with a specific textual content inside it. Right? So, aside from that, you can also set your Q expansion item on a dark background. So what you're going to do is the Q list must be set, as, uh, must be set in dark mode. By doing so, what happens is we set it on a dark mode, right? So we set this as dark. So now it's going to be in dark mode. Okay, so something's wrong. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, I see. So anyway, since dark mode hasn't been implemented. So anyway, so aside from that, you can also set 
dark mode again like i said on the output of the q expansion item here so in my case what happened is probably i've i've been i was missing uh certain classes i guess so in options we can switch the toggle to the side as you can see right here so it's in the right side so or you might ask how do you implement that so you can simply switch the toggles to the side by using the property set here so what we can do is we can so let's grab this property here and then let's put it here so what happens is if we do that it moves to the side instead of the left because the left is its default placement right so if we add the switch toggle side property it's going to move it to the right side same as with this one so if we add it here you can see that it moves to the side also right so aside from that you also have a header slot so in this case you have textual content here you have some content here as well so what that means is since we have a header slot is we can modify our header so by go by doing so or rather that's what we should do is we need to create a template with a v slot so in this case they created a template right so we can do that here as well so what we can do is we can set a template v slot I think yeah yes it's v slot and then header so after that we can remove this stuff right here because we don't need them anymore since we're taking the or rather we're using the template here we don't need those properties anymore what we need though is a q avatar let's see okay so we can use this one so let's grab this one so we have now an item section which is an avatar mode and then as you can see we have bluetooth like so and then let's reverse this one back to normal and then let's remove the dense property to make it to, to, in order to give it more padding like that and then what we're going to add next is another item section so with that we can add let's say bluetooth like in the example here right so next what we're going to have is another q item section which is the side itself so put it here and then you'll see that we have now this so what we just did is basically we have a q expansion item right but it is a child of the q list so for every q list there is a q item in this case what we did is instead of a q item we created a q expansion item and then within a q expansion item what we added is an item section based off the template so as you may notice that the expansion items and items itself are a bit or are a bit related to each other because the expansion item is based off the item itself so going back you may now see that they have modified the header slots here as well so for this one what they did is they can handle events inside the expansion item itself so if we open this one as you can see it will count continuously that's because what they did here is they have a counting right so they have a counter and then they fired a function upon the show so as you can see here there is a show property here what this does is it's basically an event right and then it's an event also or rather the hide is also an event here so with those two things we can fire events based on the showing and hiding of the that's what they call this the expansion item itself so as you can see if we show the counter starts and then if we hide it stops and then if you open it continues again so that's how expansion items handles these events so what they did here in this example here as well is they uh, they played with the inset level so you will be asking what is the inset level so basically inset level has left padding to the header itself or rather and then it doesn't do anything with the content but in the case of content it's at level it left it adds a left padding itself to the content so in this case as you can see if you use the header inset level it's the padding for this one right over here but if you use content inset level it is this one the spaces in between so if we take a look at the code itself you can see that there's only one level for the inset but for the others you can see that there are multiples so one plus one means two so it is bound to have more space than the other as you can see it is a bit spacious than compared to the other one up here like so 
So for the behavior, you can also toggle the expansion item or you can toggle it or rather for this example, you can toggle by the expansion icon only. So here, as you can see, you have this one and then you have this one as well. So as you can see, if you have a toggle by expand icon only, the item itself only expands if you click the icon right here, right? So that's what it does. But in the accordion mode, it's a bit different. If you click on an item here, you will see that the other closes. Hence the accordion mode. Because in an accordion, that's how it basically behaves. If you click one item, the other items closes and leaving this one open. As you can see, it behaves exactly like an accordion, like so. And then for pop-up mode, you will see that it pops out of nowhere. Not rather, it pops up out of its element, right? So you can implement that by simply adding the pop-up property here. So if you click this one, it pops out of the alignment. And then if you close it, it pops back into the alignment. So like this one, as you can see, it pops out and then it pops back in. So for this video, I think that's all for today. If this video has been useful for you, please don't forget to click the like button down below. As always, don't forget to click the subscribe button to get notified of our latest updates as well as our latest tutorial videos. Again, this is Joshua Haji, Software Engineering Supervisor here at Pixelate. See you later, pixelators.